Hey class, so for this video, it will be kind of a cornucopia of all of the different rigging pieces that I haven't showed you yet. So first we're gonna add a movement control and an overall control for our rigs. Um, we're gonna fix any binding problems with the eyes. We're going to add an eye control so you can have your eyes um, looking at something. Um, I'm gonna show you a real quick what I would do if I had a wheel or a rolling robot. And then finally, we'll add a squash and stretch control and add um, controllers for those. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we're back with our main model and I'm just gonna create a NURBS circle to make my overall ground control. So this will be my control that I will use for moving the model around. So what you can do is if you right click and select control vertex, you can actually scale or adjust the way that this ground control looks. So you can make like a little diamond. Um, there are some programs out there, plugins that you can buy um, that will allow you to make cooler shapes like you see in a lot of the videos. But it's kind of nice to have um, to make it yourself as well. Okay, so actually let's put this one as our global position. So it'll be the one that um, everything is under. And then let's make one more and that will be for my movements. So create one more, let's scale it up. And this one will just be a regular old ground uh, or movement control. All right, so we've got our global position and then we'll put our movement position underneath and then we're going to put all of our other controls, oh, not our joints, just all of our other controls underneath this movement control. So one thing about this um, shoulder control, because it is the robotic arm segment, I think I put it on an invisible layer. So I do want to delete history and freeze transformations of all my controls before I drop it into the overall global positioning control. And I might as well delete history and freeze transformations for that as well. Um, if you don't, then your parts may move around and um, have some very interesting results. All right, so now we have our ground and our movement. And if we move our model, our movement, everything comes with it. And then the last thing you can do is if you want to change the color of these, um, these items or these controls is go to your attribute editor, object display, drawing overrides, enable overrides. And generally the ground is yellow or like any big kind of central ones are yellow. This is totally optional, but it will help when you're animating. Cool, and I'll just fix these off camera. Okay, so now I have blue for controls that are on the right side of the body. I have red for controls that are on the left, including the foot, and then yellow for controls on the center of the body. Now, I have noticed that my um, my head control and my eyes are a little out of whack. You can see when I rotate, the eyes are kind of popping out of the head. So I do think that it is to do with the skinning on the head. So let's go back to um, our rigging menu. Go to skin and paint skin weights. And, um, sorry, let me do this one more time. Skin, paint, skin weight in the option box. And you can see for this neck joint, um, what is happening here. So it looks like this is painted correctly. However, um, it actually is not. I think what we're seeing rather than um, the head being completely white, it's actually not 100% white. So let's turn this the value to one 
opacity to one and then look what happens when I start painting. It actually becomes a real white color. So that means 100% influence rather than partial influence from this joint. So the main thing I want is for the head to completely be moved by this joint. So it has to be 100% white. Okay, so now I've got um, this part 100%. The neck is slightly um, not 100%, which is fine because it needs to deform. And then I think I've got the rest of these little ear pieces and everything set. So now let's give this a try. Grab my rotate tool. Aha! Now it's rotating, a little bit of the top of the chest is moving with it, but the eyes are also fine too. Okay, so now let's um, add the controls for these eyes. We're going to be using aim constraints for them. Um, it's, our workspace is pretty cluttered right now, so I'm just going to hide some things. I can just add selected objects for right now. Okay, and I'm just going to create some NURBS circles. So this first one, I'm going to rotate it, hold down J while you rotate to snap it to the 90 degrees. Move it up. I'm going to speed this up a little bit, but I'm going to call this the right eye control and scale it down. In the attribute editor, you can enable overrides and turn this one blue, duplicate it with command D, make the other one red, and then make a third one. And this control will be yellow and control both eyes at once. So um, you can also change your control vertices or grab your control vertices and um, scale these down and scale these two side ones up to make this control look a little bit more like a mask. And I'm just going to isolate select. So let's go to object mode. I'm going to grab these controls, the two eyes, and this other control, and isolate select since we got a lot going on. Okay, so now with each of these eyes, I'm going to center the pivot Nope. Okay, so now um, I want to make sure that I've deleted history, freeze transformations, and center the pivot for both of my eyes. So delete history, freeze transformations, center the pivot. And then the same for these controls. I want to freeze transformations, delete history. Okay, so now I can grab my control, grab my eyeball, constrain, and aim. And let's select the option box. It's really important that you turn on maintain offset and hit add. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the other eye. Constrain, aim, and maintain offset and add. Okay, so now theoretically when this moves over, my eye will be following it. And the same with this one. There we go. And this outside control is for both eyes. Cool. And the two other eye controls will go underneath it. So now if I want to move both of my eyes together, I can just click and drag and it will follow. Great. And these controls will go under, let's see. I think we can put that under our neck. And um, since they're on one of those animation layers, let's turn that layer back on. 
and now see if we can move these at once. Perfect. All right. Let's turn back on everything and make sure this is all working. So now if we rotate our neck, that's rotating. And then if we rotate our eyes or move an eye, that is moving. Awesome. Hey class, so I just wanted to show you um, how I would rig a wheel. So what I've created is the wheel geo and then this ground control will control the steering. So left and right, it will also control the movement forward and back. And then I have another control that will control the rotation. So the spinning forward or backwards of the wheel. So for each of these curves and for the wheel itself, I want to make sure that I'm deleting history and freezing transformations. If for some reason your pivot point has been moved, you can always center your pivot point. And you wanna make sure that these are um, centered with each other. So if you need to do that, um, make sure you line those up. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is my steering is going to be apparent to my wheel rotation. So I'm gonna middle mouse button drag that into the other control. And then I'm gonna set up some parent constraints. So let's see, I'm gonna grab my steering. I'm gonna grab my geo and do constrain and parent. Make sure maintain offset is on. I'm gonna do the same thing with the wheel rotation. Um, wheel rotation control and click the geo. Nope, just gonna click them in the scene here. And constrain and parent. So now um, this first steering, it is going to be fine with translation. It will rotate in the Y direction. It's gonna rotate in the Z direction, which is this way, but I don't want it to rotate in the X direction, which is this way. So I'm just gonna lock and hide selected. And then for this constraint, let's make sure that it's working. Yep. This is only going to work in the X direction. So I'm gonna select these other areas and lock and hide selected and select these other ones and lock and hide selected. So now when I use my ground control to um, rotate and um, move my wheel. At the same time, I can key the rotation for this one. So I can click and drag, click and drag. Okay, so the last thing I wanna show you guys is just the um, adding a squash and stretch control to the belly here. And so that's kind of an interesting um, challenge. So I'm going to create a NURB circle, scale it up, and I'm going to move it to about the center of the belly. And delete history, freeze transformations. And in my attribute editor, I'm going to do my drawing overrides and make it something kind of crazy. Let's do, yeah, bright green. Perfect. Um, the next thing I want to do is actually create the squash and stretch control. So this is our squash control. Um, so to do that, I'm going to select my geo or my mesh, go to deform menu and nonlinear and squash. And you can see it creates this giant handle thing that I'm going to show you with wireframe on. And this is our squash and stretch control. So um, it has a few different options associated with it. Um, the one, the big one is the low bounds and the high bounds. So basically the way it's set up right now, it would squash from the head, from the ears, all the way to the feet. 
and that doesn't seem so realistic for this particular model. So I'm going to change my low bounds to negative 0.6 and I'm going to change my high bounds to zero. There we go. So that's looking a little closer, but it's still a little bit off. So I would like to change um, to click on the squash handle here and go back to my attribute editor and go to squash handle. Here we go. And my translate, I want to change to four. Yes. Okay. And so now when we look at it, I have a top kind of crisscross here and a bottom X. And both of these are the high bound and the low bound of my model. So it's going to squish from about the shoulders to the um, end of the belly. Cool. All right. So that's where the squash is going to go. Now I need to get my squash control to pair with my squash handle. So um, just going to delete history freeze transformations one more time on that one. And I'm going to select my squash controller and I'm going to go to channel box layer editor, edit and add attribute. So this is how I'm going to um, squash controller. This is how I'm going to add like one of these values, these channels inside Maya that I can um, animate. For my minimum value, I'm going to change that to negative 0.5. My maximum will be 0.5. And then we can keep the rest of these the same and just hit OK. And you can see instantly for this little control, I have now added a value that can be changed from 0 to negative 0.5 to 0.5. But it's not yet linked to my squash handle. So to do that, um, we are going to select our squash control again. I'm going to go to Window, General Editors, and Connection Editor. Scroll down on the left hand side, so this is the value of this squash controller here. And now I need to select my squash handle and also this inputs. And over here, we're going to reload the right. So this is saying take the value of this squash controller on the left and we're going to input it into um, the value that we select on the right. And the one we want is the factor. And now we can hit close. So now if we select our squash control and click and drag and change our squash controller, you can see that my model here, let's go back to smooth shade all. My model is getting a significant amount of squash and stretch. So I can change it to 0.5 and we'll get a stretch on the body. I can change it to zero, that's default, and then negative 0.5 or anything in between. And it is kind of stretching the arm, so that's a fun little connection. Um, but that is how you would add a squash and stretch to your model. So I'm gonna reset that to zero. Now um, I'm going to link some other tutorials down below um, that are helpful and good luck with your um, robot project. Let me know if you have any questions and um, we'll see you after the break. Thanks.